You know, we are like a kid in a candy shop, <laughs> Kathy and I, when we get to be with you and open up the Word of God and uh, just enjoy the delicious revelations that are packed in these pages and in these supernatural divine frequencies. And I mean, they bring life on every level. Uh, we thank you for contacting us and, and being active with TCT and with Len Mink Ministries uh, on, on the, the, the social media platform, uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that. We really appreciate hearing from you. And uh, every time we open up our devices and read these, we hear about people that learned something they didn't know before, or it was something they had heard was said uh, on the program in a different way, and it brought it to light. So we want to thank you for your, your interaction with us. We want to praise God that uh, the words that He causes to come across the airwaves to your heart and to your mind, your home, your business, your finances, your marriage, your parenting, and all of that, we thank God that they're doing good. So let us keep hearing from you. And uh, we're going to continue our study on the subject of the most powerful force in the universe, and that is the force of faith, F-A-I-T-H. Darlin, you have been laying out the filet mignon from the Word of God for us. And it is so good. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say on today's broadcast. Faith is my favorite subject. No joke. Because it really is. It's the key to everything. We've been talking about the three, three of the many benefits of having a higher word level in your heart, coming out of your mouth and in your mind, your thoughts by renewing your mind. But see, you do that together. Uh, as you're feeding the word into your heart through reading, through speaking, through listening, it's renewing your mind at the same time. It's helping you to think God's thoughts and fill your mind with His thoughts. So it, it's really, I always say, it's not digging ditches. Amen. It's not hard, but it does take effort and determination, discipline. So the first benefit was uh, it changes your self-image all the way down to the subconscious level. Hallelujah. Mm, thank God. So you can just totally be set free. Number two, it changes your circumstances because as you send faith out, because you're so full of faith, um, you can change anything. And we talked about Charles Capps calling the law of faith and confession the law of change. Remember, you don't have to accept things that aren't from God. You can change it. And then the third thing was the Word begins talking to you and leads you to wonderful situations, to the answers to your situations, puts you in the right place at the right time, and brings you results. We looked at Proverbs 6, 22 and 23, which talks about the Word talks to you. And that's the leading of the Holy Spirit. There's another example. I was talking about the boy who got the job by uh, feeling like he wanted a cup of coffee and the man that sat next to him hired him. So we mentioned that one. But there is a, another one that is just amazing that I love. And that is Darlene Bishop who is a pastor of a church even in this state of Ohio where we're taping. She is a lady that's filled with the Word, and therefore she had the leading of the Lord. She develops it all the time. But she had a situation where she was out of town speaking. She goes out and speaks at other places as well. And when she got home, her house had been broken into and all her jewelry, her valuable jewelry was gone. Well, Darlene is full of the Word. She is something, I tell you, very strong in the Word. Yes, she is. And so the, the Word started talking to her. So she grabbed that church directory and she was looking down the names and she saw a name and a phone number on there and the Lord spoke to her. He's the one. 
And she had the boldness to believe God. She called that man and she said, you have my jewelry and I want it back. And he just about fell over. He admitted it. She said, I'm going to give you one hour to get it back here in my house or I'm calling the police. And so she went out, got a cup of coffee, came back. All her jewelry was there. <laughs> but look what was averted by being led by God and the Holy Spirit uh -huh. instead of your only option being this world's legal system. She was going to use that if he didn't do right. Uh -huh. But that gentleman got a chance to change his mind and do right and bring back that jewelry. And because he did, he didn't have to go to jail. Mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. God gave him another chance. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. God is filled with second and third and fourth chances and reset buttons and fresh starts and all of that. Uh, the, the, the word says that his mercy is new every morning. I mean, it all starts over again at sunrise, as it were. His mercy, His grace, His goodness, His pardon. So, you know, if you've goofed up and you've done something stupid, just ask God to forgive you and walk in that forgiveness. That's right. And realize that there's a whole fresh day out there for you, and it's like nothing ever happened to God. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It really is. And, you know, with Darlene, we have the example of her being filled with the Word, therefore she was confident. She heard the Lord leading her, mm -hmm. and then she was merciful mm -hmm. and gave him an opportunity to make it right, and then forgave him. Mm -hmm. We have all those things in that one little situation mm -hmm. because she had enough Word in her to rise up, be confident and bold, most people would have never known who did it. Mm -hmm. And all the time the Lord's trying to tell them. Mm -hmm. Because He wanted to bless that person too. He wanted to help that person do right and not go deeper into criminal acts, you know. And get, he, God wanted him to get his needs met through God. Yeah. Not through some Ill, illicit, illegal thing. Not through somebody else's jewelry. Not through somebody else's jewelry. <laughs> That's right. That's right. God has a better way. Praise the Lord. Right. But I want to break it down to there are two kinds of faith. The first kind is dominating faith where we take dominion and we change the circumstances. The second kind is creative faith. And we see both those examples with Jesus when he was on the earth. So I want to look at uh, Mark 4, 39. Now, most of us know this story, but let's look at it in the Word. Mark 4, 39. This is where uh, Jesus and the disciples were in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. They were going from one side to another and a terrible storm came up. And Jesus was in rest. He was asleep in the back of the ship. So let's pick it up in uh, verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, you realize that Jesus was followed by multitudes everywhere, wanting healing and wanting to hear him teach. So when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. So there was more than just their main ship. There were a lot of ships mm -hmm. traveling with them. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. So now it was full. So here's their ship filling up with water, which means it's eventually going to sink. Could I point out something here? Please. Uh, that I did a study on verse 37 in uh, the Greek, and it says, and there arose a great storm of wind and waves and so forth. This was not just a meteorological event. Uh, the original language and a lot of other cross-references in the Bible 
says this, this was an exceeding great disturbance instantly coming at them from out of nowhere. In other words, there were no other weather, weather patterns that would generate this. Uh, this just dropped on them out of nowhere. And the bottom line of all this study is this was a demonically inspired weather event mm -hmm. to try to take them out. So with that backdrop, let's continue on with Kathy. Well, verse, verse 38, he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they woke him and said to him, Master, care us not that we perish. <laughs> so they were a little shook as most of us would be with the water filling the ship and the huge waves and wind. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now that verse is key. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? See, they were learning more about Jesus all the time as they traveled with him. And he was pretty amazing. He used dominating faith to take authority over the wind and the waves, and they obeyed him instantly. Now, I'm going to tell you why this 40th verse is so important in this passage. Uh, we're going to take a break here and tell you about two love gifts that we want to send you when you partner with TCT. We want to send you 39 scriptures that you can speak and increase your faith with called the Prosperity Packet. And then this is the prosperity scriptures and confessions. We're talking prosperity in money and in every area. This, I went into a studio and recorded. So it's me speaking the scriptures, the 39 scriptures that are in this packet so that you can hear them as you drive or wherever you are. So we'll be back in just a moment. Let scripture from Len and Kathy inspire abundance with TCT Special Prosperity Package. Kathy, we have a couple of wonderful blessings for people. This is the Len Mink Ministries packet of cards that deal with increase and prosperity. 39 scriptures for you to put in your pocket, pull out and read anytime, wherever you are. Then I recorded these same scriptures in a recording studio, and I have them for you on audio CD. Receive TCT's Prosperity Package with your gift of $45 or more. Call 866-338-5033. Welcome back. We're looking at dominating faith, and Jesus gave us such a great example of it in Mark 4:39. I'm going to read it in the NIV. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, "Quiet, be still." Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Now, if it wasn't for the 40th verse, we would all chalk that up to just Jesus could do that, but nobody else could but we've got the 40th verse. Hmm. In the 40th verse, Jesus himself said to the disciples, so he's saying it to us today in our storms, why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So he was telling them that they didn't have to fear in that situation, that they could have rebuked the wind and the sea with their faith. And we always want to use our dominating faith because there are so many things today that need to be dominated, <laughs> that's for Amen. sure. 
So he is telling the disciples and telling us today that we have that same ability to use our faith to dominate things that try to come against us. And um, I do have a teaching on no, not to me, you don't. And that is a good phrase to keep ready on the tip of your tongue mm -hmm. when things come your way that are not from God and that you don't like. You can say, no, no, we're not putting up with this. We don't receive this. We don't take it. Not to me, you don't. Kathy, in verse 39, uh, you were reading it and it said, and he arose, Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. In the original language there, uh, the word rebuked means he condemned the wind's authority to blow any longer. Praise God. Isn't that good? That's so descriptive when you get into the original Greek and Hebrew on things in the Bible. He condemned the wind's authority to blow any longer. Now, now watch this. He rebuked the wind. He condemned its authority to blow any longer. Now he took authority over the wind and then he spoke to the sea. Now, meteorologically in the natural world, we know that wind causes waves. That's one of the things that causes waves. So if the wind stops, you know the waves have to respond. But this was a supernatural storm. This was a demonic storm. So he evidently felt the need to address the cause of the waves, which in the natural was the wind, uh, the wind being caused by demonic uh, attack and the waves responding to the energy on top of the water that the wind brought. Now, uh, when he said to the sea, peace be still, it had to obey him because he made the sea. And uh, I just noticed that he spoke to the wind, which was unseen, and then he spoke to the sea, which was seen. I think that's a very significant observation because when you speak the Word of God into a situation, you are speaking the supernatural divine frequencies of God Almighty and the authority He's given you as a believer in the name of Jesus. You're speaking into the the spiritual realm and controlling and overwhelming and overtaking and controlling the unseen realm. And then you can then speak when you've, when you've, when you've stopped the momentum of the enemy in the unseen, you can then speak to the things the enemy was trying to use against you to take you out that are in the natural. Do you get it? I pray that you did. I, it kind of went around the barn to explain it, but uh, this is a very, very amazing demonstration of speaking into the unseen spirit realm to the root of the cause of some of our troubles. And then once the ax has been laid to the root, so to speak, in the spirit realm by our speaking, then we speak to the natural things to get in line, to get in order, to obey what we just spoke into the spirit realm. Oh, I like just, that. There's just so much in this scripture. So good, so good. I love that. Keep going. What happened next? Everything was calm. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything obeyed him and things will obey I us ca I as call well. Ca I call Kathy bottom line <laughs> Kathy. She, I'll say something that I just will pray she'll just go into a beautiful flowery discussion and just more teaching and she'll say, everything was calm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's, that's the charm of my darling. So well, honey, I've got a second kind of faith I need to talk about. I'll quit talking, so go no, ahead. No, I mean, that's why I just said everything was calm because we need to move on to creative I, faith. I'll be calm, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Peace be still. That's what you didn't want to say. All right, go ahead, darling. Well, the second kind of faith that we have and we can use is creative faith. 
which is so exciting. We can literally create things with our faith and with our words. Now let's go back to Jesus while he's on the earth. Let's go to Matthew 15. And oh, people just, you know, they just followed him and mobbed him everywhere he went. And I don't blame them. We would too, yep. because he had the truth, the life and the way, and he had the real life of God in him. He was the living word. And so this is an example of the kind of uh, things that happened. And we'll see him using creative faith in the list of things here. Verse 20, Matthew 15, verse 20. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. He actually tried to rest, but it wasn't easy because there were multitudes of needy people and they were in bad shape. They didn't have all we have today to go to plan B for the doctor to fix us up. And it says, and great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, I mean they couldn't hear or speak, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitudes wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Now, the reason we know this is creative faith is because it says, the maimed to be whole. These are people that were missing limbs. And, you know, leprosy was really prevalent. And I wonder if some of them weren't lepers, but they were either born without limbs or they were missing limbs for some reason. They may not have had a rightly formed tongue because they couldn't speak, but they could after Jesus prayed for them. Um, all of these things Many of them were totally creative miracles. Well, why not? Because God created all of us in the first place. He created man in his image and he created us to be whole. So here we have creative faith where it is spoken and it is illustrated by Jesus and it is still available for us today. I could tell you testimony after testimony of people that were missing limbs that received a new leg, mm -hmm. uh, people that were missing fingers, missing parts of their body that got a creative miracle. Even teeth. Teeth. Mm -hmm. it, it was so many. And we hear a lot of this in other countries because they are more desperate for them and more willing to open their heart to grab them. But we have them in America too. Yes, we do. But uh, recently a friend of ours prayed for a lady that had a, a metal holding together her leg and he prayed for her leg and the next day when she got up, she went back to the doctor, had it x-rayed, the metal was gone. So we had it creative in the other way where the, the metal and the pens or whatever either dissolved or supernaturally disintegrated, whatever, they were gone. And so there was a new leg there, muscle, cartilage, bone that had needed that metal or those pens no longer needed it. So they were created new. So remember that your faith can dominate and your faith can create whatever you need. And the reason Jesus gives us these examples is so we will act on them and have the great faith to do them too. He said that he did works, great works, but we would do greater. Now we're still all believing that. We've seen some greater works. Some, some people try to say that it's um, 
because there are more people on the earth and there'll be more people reached. But I don't really think that's what he meant. Uh, there is a truth in that, but I think he meant miracles, miraculous things. And I want to look at um, John 15, John 15, 7. You might be thinking, well, you know, I haven't seen the miracles when I've tried to use my faith like some people talk about. Well, I think this scripture is the answer and it's back to our subject today. It's your word level. In Matthew 15, it's in red, verse 7, Jesus said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So, if the word of God abides in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. Well, that's good to know. Because if you haven't had a lot of answers, if you feel like you haven't seen what, what you've sent your faith to do, increase your word level so there's more word abiding in you. And I've asked the Lord so many times, what's the difference between John Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Oral Roberts, all these people, and us, and just every Christian? And over and over again, what I have felt in my spirit, the answer he gave me was, they just had more word in them and they had the boldness to act on it. That's it. And I believe that. I really believe that. So be encouraged today. Fill yourself with the word. Keep it going in you. And don't forget to join us on social media. We want you to know what's going on. We want to give you scripture on that as well. Keep watching TCT. Watch us here on Lynn and Kathy, and we'll see you next time right here.